Hey there guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm gonna hit the whiteboard really quick and I'm gonna show you uh, how to plan out your uh, databases for Notion. This is how you could plan any databases. It's kind of something I've created in my own mind, but I'm sure it's already somewhat created out there in the world. Um, it's just a way to plan out your database so that you can use relations, lookups, databases, and filters within Notion to really just systemize your life and make things easier. So I'm just gonna show you first and foremost really quick what this looks like. Um, at a mind, sort of like a mind mapping level, right? So you have to understand what you're trying to achieve. So if you're trying to get more organized in your business or in your life or whatever it might be, you have to understand the components of your life. So let's say you're either a, I will use a student as an example first. So let's say you're a student, okay? And students have classes and within their classes, they have homework and they have notes and basically they have they might have you know a teacher so you have to understand the components of what you're trying to achieve if you're trying to get organized you have all these things running through your mind all day you have to kind of see these as nodes and connections so a node is like a thing and a connection means like it's connected to another thing right so classes have notes classes have homework classes have teachers um, homework might have questions Okay, like you might have a question after your homework. Okay, so you have to just map this out first if you want to um, really start using databases in Notion. Another example is like a business. So a business, let's say it's a service business. Let's say it's like a lawn care. So I'm just gonna say lawn care. So you have a lawn care business. And within this lawn care business, you have uh, clients. Clients have uh, yards and yards have different tasks. Okay, they might have tasks such as like weed, eating, fertilizing, mowing. You just have to understand there are nodes and there are the connectors between these nodes that kind of make these relationships a thing, okay? So basically these are going to be your pages in Notion, pages. And these ones down here are kind of like sub sections of tasks. So these are gonna be columns. Yards might have a, have a column that's like status. So I'm going to show you how if you are a lawn care business with this sort of structure, or if you're any sort of business, this is just an example, or if you're a student or anything, how you can map this out and how you can keep track of everything in your life because this is a really important skill to have. So let's jump into Notion. All right, so here we are in my computer and what you're going to see is that I've created this special page right here, uh, just to illustrate relations, lookups, databases, and filters in Notion. So if you're in Notion, you can add a quick icon just to show you uh, kind of what this is going to be all about. So this is just an example page. Let's just do like the gear. And then uh, you can also add covers. So add cover right here. And this is just a nice picture just to uh, give it kind of an artistic side of things. So let's just make that yellow. Um, it can help you organize things too if you, if you want to color code things. Um, and what I'm going to do here is this is going to be kind of our hub for our company. So maybe you could actually put your company name here. So let's just do Carter's Lawn Care. Actually, let's just make this thing look awesome. Let's make it actually look like a lawn care business. Boom, Carter's Lawn Care. We're going to optimize and systemize the hell out of this thing so that it's super efficient, okay? Uh, if you guys want to check out my other video on like how I use this in my own company, literally check out the card up in the corner that'll be in one of these corners and it'll link back to that video where I show you guys um, basically how I use this in my business. Now, if you guys remember earlier in the video, we had pages and we had columns and we had nodes and connectors and all that confusing stuff. It's going to make a lot more sense now. So the first sort of node that we had was clients. Okay, clients. And I'm just going to put like a person here. And then we're gonna turn this into a table. Now in this table under the name count, we're just gonna enter our clients. So we have John H, Susan R, Roger M, okay? So we have our names for our different clients. And then within this, we have to ask ourselves, like what's important to know, right? So maybe we wanna add in a email column, right? So email, so that we have their email on file and we kind of understand like how we can contact them super easily. So we've got an email column. Maybe we have a phone column, right? So phone, we can put our, their phone number in there. This just keeps things very simple. We kind of know how to keep in contact with these people. And then maybe we have a location 
tab and we're actually going to make this a uh, select okay so maybe we have like a lot of different cities that we have our lawn care business in so we could enter all of the cities here i'm just going to enter local cities near me in michigan so kalamazoo is a city in michigan i'm going to create that um grand rapids maybe we have clients in grand rapids maybe we have clients in detroit this is super far spreading here i guess so detroit uh traverse city we're a Michigan wide company. Okay, so we have different locations for all these clients. So let's just enter some mock phone numbers. And some mock emails. We're going to finish entering these locations here. Okay, so now we have a very simple database of clients, their emails, phone numbers and their locations. And basically this is going to just give us a good idea of all of our clients in our system. If we wanted to, what we can actually do is open up these client pages and you can put notes in here about the client. So maybe they're in the sales process and you haven't closed them yet. You could just write a uh, large two acre yard needs once a week trimming of hedges. I don't know guys, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm not a uh, lawn care professional, but I'm just trying to fill this in. Needs new sprinkler system. Okay, so we've got some awesome notes in there, but what you can also do is you can add an icon here. I'm just gonna upload an image really quick here of this uh, headshot. And you can add a cover if you'd like to. Maybe you have John's yard in the background. So yeah, this would be basically the client profile it has their phone, has their email, and it's super easy to kind of see uh, everything about John in an in instant, basically. Kind of get a pulse on how John is doing. Um, I'm gonna do the same for all of these really quick. All right, so now I've got profile pictures in here for all of these guys and girls, and these are basically our clients. So our client database is constantly being updated and it lives right here as clients. Now, next, if you guys remember back when I was drawing that flow chart, we have uh, yards within these clients. These clients have yards, right? So I'm gonna create a yards page and an icon, and I'm going to click table, okay? So under yard, yard is going to have a name. So let's say a client has like two yards underneath them because that could definitely be possible. Or let's say um, they have like a primary residence and a secondary residence or something like that. So, um, we're just going to put like client name here. So let's just say John yard and then dash yard one. And then let's say John dash yard two. Okay. And then uh, I forget our clients names. That's not good. So Susan, Roger, and Jill. Okay. So let's say Susan, Roger, and Jill just have one yard. So Susan yard one okay so you'd have those names because this name column is mandatory and it, you need it to relate these yards to different tasks in the future um so we're, we're going to just keep this name column that's totally fine you can actually move it if you don't like it being up front because it is kind of messy looking but what you want to do within that is you want to click right here and then you want to go to relation okay now you're going to select a database and i'm going to find uh clients create relation and I'm gonna name this clients. So you have to pick the related client for each name. So this one is going to be related to John. So we're gonna hit plus on John. And this one's related to John as well. We're gonna hit plus. Susan, we're gonna hit plus. Now let's say you wanted to have their phone number on this yard section. This is where the roll up would come in handy, okay? So you could go over here, you could go to roll up and it's actually going to see that you've already related clients, that page. And within clients, there are you know, different columns within clients. So let's say phone number is one of those columns. We're just going to pull this from an existing related database clients right here. We've already defined that. And we're going to put a uh, phone. And it's automatically gonna populate those all from the other uh, client database. Now within yards, maybe we have different services that we provide for the yards. In John's first yard, let's just say we need to mow, we need to hedge trim, to install sprinklers and then let's just say on his second yard he just wants us to mow because this dude's on a budget he's got two mortgages to pay and then susan over here needs hedge trimming only uh roger just needs a sprinkler system and jill needs mowing and hedge trimming okay so now we can see the services that we're providing with this multi-select column here 
And lastly, let's say we need to check on the status of a project. Okay, so status, we're gonna select here and I'm just gonna have a single select. So the multi-select allows you to add multiple here. The single select will just allow one, but this will be our status. So basically how far along is the project? Um, complete, waiting, or not started. And then let's also put in a due date column. So date, and let's just say all of these, well actually let's say those two aren't started. Let's say Susan's is complete. We're waiting for Roger. We're waiting for the sprinkler system parts to come in or something like that. And then uh, Jill's is also complete. So on here for due date, we could put in like, let's just say the 19th, this is due by, we need to mow this by the 19th and get this sprinkler system in. Uh, in. And let's say this one's waiting too, because we're waiting on the sprinkler system. These are the dates that they're due. This is the dates that we said we'd have it done by. And then this one is complete. So maybe we need to do it again. Um, and that's where you can add in a job type and you could add like select, you could do uh, recurring, or you could do one time. Okay, so most of these are gonna be recurring, let's just say, because we're all on monthly sort of uh, budgets, except for Roger. Roger's just an install for sprinkler system, so that's just one time. Okay, the rest of them though are gonna be recurring, and we're gonna do all of these sort of tasks over and over again. So these recurring ones, we would constantly be updating the next due date. So Susan's is complete, but we're gonna to need to do it next week. Um, so you might want to change that to not started so that we're ahead of that. Uh, Rogers, we're waiting on. It's a one-time thing and it's due by the end of next week. And Jill's is complete, um, but we need to do it next week. So we're going to change that to not started. But let's say the day of it's completed. Um, just maybe click complete just so you know that it's kind of checked off your list and then uh, not started for the next week. But essentially that is how you would organize these different uh, sort of statuses and you have like due dates in here, you can do job types, you can get really creative with how you lay this out. Now within yards, we have tasks, okay? And I'm just gonna do the little uh, green check mark for this, and we're gonna add a little cover, all right? And within here, we're going to do another table. Now these are kind of subsections of the um, of the different projects. So the tasks are just gonna be the different things that you have to do for the yards that, that need to get checked off essentially. So tasks might be install front yard sprinkler system, install backyard sprinkler system. So this is literally just your to-do list that you normally would write out on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard or in Trello, but you're just writing it out in here. Once you have all these tasks laid out, these are gonna be related to different yards, okay? Because we have different yards here on file. Um, so I'm gonna go down to yards, create relation, and I'm gonna name it yard. Okay, so the install sprinkler system, uh, that's for what time, what type of uh, services are we providing? So we're gonna install sprinkler system for Roger in the front yard. So he's basically the related yard for this sort of, uh, this sort of task. Okay, and then maybe Roger is also the task here. Um, and then we have Roger there, and then Roger here. And then order more fertilizer, this might be for, uh, you know, this might be for Jill. Now here, what we wanna do is we want to add a checkbox. Okay, so completion status. All right, so for the completion status, you're just literally gonna hit checkbox, and this is just a yes, no checkbox you can kind of hit, so I'm gonna drag that down so it's nice and easy to use. Now, what I would also do is do another relation and you can do it back to, uh, you know, clients, create relation, and then you can just do client and you can relate it back to whatever client this is, uh, this is for. So what you can do is for Roger, we can hit Roger. So let's say we want these to show up if they aren't complete yet, but we don't want them to show up if they're complete. So once we complete it, we want it to disappear and go to an archive. What you do is you click up here and you create a new table. I'm actually just gonna delete this just to show uh, a different view. It will actually say add a view for you. So just hit add a view, create. And then as you can see, it says table view. Just click on these three dots right here and then it'll pull up the naming for this. So for table view here, we're just gonna name this particular one uh, complete tasks. 
and then we're going to hit the default view here and we're just going to name it uh, incomplete tasks. Okay, so incomplete tasks, it's showing up just how we want it to, right, with all of these. But when we click on these, we want them to disappear. So what you have to do is actually have to hit filter. And let's just check this so that we can see that it's working. Um, and before we uh, install the sprinkler system, we have to order it, right? So I'm going to check that one as if we've already done it. I'm going to go to filter, add a filter, add a filter again. And you say where completion is not checked, you know, don't show it up, right? So basically once these are clicked now, they're going to disappear. Okay, now where do they go, right? Well, they're still here technically. If I go to complete tasks, it's still going to be in here, but we don't want it to show incomplete tasks here. This, cause this is our archive essentially when we switch to this view, right? So incomplete tasks, we click them and they go to our archive. So we don't want these ones to show up here that aren't uh, complete yet. Um, we want to filter this uh, table and make it the opposite. So completion is checked. Okay, so this is completion is not checked and this is completion is checked. So now these tasks are kind of uh, working a little bit more dynamically and this is this kind of helps us check things off our list as we go. I really do hope that this video helped you guys out with databases, relations, rollups, all of that. I really hope that you know you guys got value from this and you can implement this in your business. Um, this is a great strategic way to, to just get things more organized. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. And if you had any questions, please leave a comment below. I'd be happy to help. I am sorry that the audio went out halfway through this video. It looks like my camera died, so we had to switch to computer audio, which probably isn't quite as good, but I suppose it works for getting the point across. So yeah, again, hope this video helped you out. Subscribe if you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.